Plaza Theater in El Paso, Haunted Paranormal Hotspot in Texas Chapter 1. The reopening the evening sky over El Paso was painted with hues of deep purples and fiery oranges, casting a warm glow over the city. The streets were buzzing with excitement, and the air was thick with anticipation. The marquee lights of the Plaza Theater Performing Arts Center flickered to life, casting a golden hue on the crowd that had gathered outside. The grand reopening of the theater was the talk of the town, and everyone wanted to be a part of this historic event. Carl, a young journalist with sharp features and a keen eye for detail, adjusted his glasses and took in the scene. He had been assigned to cover the event for the local newspaper, and he was determined to make the most of this opportunity. As he made his way through the crowd, he could hear hushed whispers and excited chatter about the theater's storied past. They say this place is haunted, you know, a woman in a red dress said to her friend, her eyes wide with excitement. I've heard the stories, her friend replied with a shiver. But I don't believe in ghosts. Carl's ears perked up at the mention of the theater's haunted past. He had always been fascinated by the supernatural, and the idea of a haunted theater was too intriguing to pass up. He approached the two women, introducing himself and asking if they had any personal experiences with the theater's ghosts. The woman in the red dress, whose name was Maria, shared a story about her grandmother, who had once been an actress at the theater. She used to tell me stories about seeing a woman in white wandering the halls and hearing the sound of a child's laughter when no one was around, Maria said, her voice trembling slightly. She said the theater was cursed. Carl scribbled down notes, his mind racing with possibilities. He thanked Maria and her friend for their time and continued to mingle with the crowd, collecting stories and anecdotes about the theater's haunted history. As the evening wore on, the crowd began to disperse, and the theater's grand lobby slowly emptied. Carl was about to head home when he felt a cold hand on his shoulder. He turned around to find an elderly man with piercing blue eyes and a weathered face staring back at him. You're the journalist, aren't you? The man asked, his voice raspy and low. Carl nodded, taken aback by the man's sudden appearance. Yes, I'm Carl. Can I help you? The man leaned in close, his breath cold against Carl's ear. My name is Charles Russell, he whispered. I used to manage this theater back in the day. And I have a warning for you. Carl's heart raced as he listened to Charles's words. The old man spoke of dark secrets, hidden rooms, and restless spirits that roamed the theater's halls. He spoke of a curse that had plagued the theater for decades and warned Carl to be careful. You may not believe in ghosts now, Charles said, his voice dripping with menace. But if you spend enough time in this theater, you will. Carl was shaken by the encounter, but his journalistic instincts kicked in. He thanked Charles for his time and promised to heed his warning. But as he made his way out of the theater, he couldn't shake the feeling that he was being watched. The night was dark and silent as Carl walked back to his car, the weight of the theater's haunted past heavy on his mind. He knew he had stumbled upon a story that was bigger than he could have ever imagined, and he was determined to uncover the truth. As he drove away, the theater's marquee lights flickered one last time, casting an eerie glow on the empty streets of El Paso. The Plaza Theater Performing Arts Center may have been reborn, but its ghosts were very much alive. And Carl was about to find out just how real they were. Chapter 2 The first night the Plaza Theater Performing Arts Center stood tall and majestic against the backdrop of El Paso's city lights. 
Its grandeur was undeniable, but as night fell, a palpable eeriness began to envelop the building. Carl, driven by a mix of journalistic curiosity and a desire to understand the mysteries Charles had hinted at, decided to spend the night inside the theater. He had come prepared with a flashlight, a notebook, and a digital recorder, hoping to capture any anomalous sounds or events. As he settled into one of the plush red seats in the main auditorium, the weight of the theater's history pressed down on him. The dim ambient light from the street lamps outside filtered through the ornate windows, casting long, dancing shadows across the room. The silence was almost deafening. Every creak of the wooden floorboards, every rustle of the velvet curtains seemed amplified. Carl took a deep breath, trying to calm his racing heart. He reminded himself that he was here for a story, not to let his imagination run wild. But as the hours ticked by, the atmosphere inside the theater grew colder. Carl could see his breath in the dim light, and he pulled his jacket tighter around him. He began to feel an inexplicable draft, as though a window had been left open. But when he checked, all the entrances and exits were securely shut. Then, faintly at first, he heard it, a distant whisper, echoing through the vastness of the auditorium. It was indistinct, like a conversation happening far away. Carl strained his ears, trying to make out the words, but they remained elusive. He activated his digital recorder, hoping to capture the sounds. Suddenly, without warning, the theater was plunged into complete darkness. The faint light from the street lamps was snuffed out, and Carl was left blind in the inky blackness. Panic surged through him, and he fumbled for his flashlight. But before he could turn it on, he saw something that made his blood run cold, a shadowy figure, standing at the far end of the stage, barely visible in the gloom. The figure was tall and slender, with an ethereal quality to it. It seemed to be watching Carl, its presence both menacing and sad. Carl's mind raced. Was this one of the spirits Charles had spoken of? Was it the woman in white or the man in black? Or was it something else entirely? Frozen in place, Carl could only watch as the figure began to move towards him, its steps silent and deliberate. He felt an overwhelming sense of dread, but he couldn't tear his eyes away. The distance between them seemed to close rapidly, and just as the figure was about to reach him, the lights suddenly flickered back on. Carl blinked, momentarily blinded by the sudden brightness. When his vision cleared, the figure was gone, leaving no trace of its presence. The theater was once again silent and empty, but the temperature remained unnaturally cold. Shaken, Carl gathered his belongings and made his way out of the auditorium. He knew he couldn't stay in the theater any longer not after what he had experienced. But as he stepped outside into the cool El Paso night, he realized that his investigation was far from over. The theater had revealed a glimpse of its secrets, and Carl was more determined than ever to uncover the truth. He knew that the spirits of the Plaza Theater had a story to tell, and he was going to be the one to tell it. But for now, he needed to rest and process what had happened. The events of the night had taken a toll on him, both physically and mentally. As he drove away from the theater, he couldn't shake the feeling that he was being watched. The shadowy figure's presence lingered in his mind, a haunting reminder of the mysteries that lay within the walls of the Plaza Theater Performing Arts Center. And as dawn broke over El Paso, Carl knew that his journey into the unknown had only just begun. Chapter 3 The woman in white the morning sun streamed through the windows of Carl's apartment, 
casting a warm glow over his cluttered desk. Papers, old photographs, and newspaper clippings were strewn about, evidence of a night spent in deep research. Carl had delved into the archives of El Paso's local library, searching for any information about the Plaza Theater's past. Among the yellowed pages of a local newspaper from the 1930s, he found a tragic story that caught his attention. It was about a young actress named Isabella Martinez, known for her ethereal beauty and captivating performances. She was the star of the theater, loved by all who saw her perform. But her life was cut short in a tragic accident. One evening, after a particularly emotional performance, she was found dead in her dressing room, the cause of her death a mystery. The article mentioned rumors of a forbidden romance and a broken heart, but no concrete evidence was ever found. As Carl read the story, he felt a chill run down his spine. Could Isabella be the woman in white he had seen in the theater? The pieces seemed to fit, but he needed more evidence. Determined to find answers, Carl decided to return to the Plaza Theater that evening. The events of the previous night were still fresh in his mind, but he felt a pull, a need to understand the mysteries that lay within the theater's walls. As night fell, Carl made his way through the theater's grand lobby and into the main auditorium. The atmosphere was thick with anticipation, and he could feel the weight of the theater's history pressing down on him. He took a deep breath and began to explore, his flashlight cutting through the darkness. As he made his way towards the stage, he felt a sudden drop in temperature. The air grew cold, and he could see his breath in the dim light. And then, out of the corner of his eye, he saw her, the woman in white. She stood at the edge of the stage, her long white dress flowing around her. Her face was pale, her eyes filled with sadness. She seemed to be searching for something, her gaze fixed on a spot in the audience. Carl approached her slowly, his heart racing. Isabella? He whispered, hoping to make a connection. The woman in white turned to face him, her eyes locking onto his. She seemed to be trying to communicate something to him, but no words came out. Instead, she pointed towards a seat in the front row. Curious, Carl made his way to the seat and began to search. And there, tucked away under the cushion, he found an old locket. It was tarnished with age, but as he opened it, he was greeted with a black and white photograph of a young woman. It was Isabella, her eyes filled with hope and dreams of a bright future. As he held the locket, Carl felt a rush of emotions. Sadness, longing, and a deep sense of loss. He looked up, hoping to share his discovery with the woman in white, but she was gone. The theater was once again silent and empty. Carl clutched the locket to his chest, feeling a connection to Isabella and her tragic story. He realized that the theater was not just a building, but a vessel for the memories and emotions of those who had come before. As he made his way out of the theater, Carl felt a renewed sense of purpose. He was determined to uncover the truth about Isabella's death and bring her story to light. The Plaza Theater had revealed another piece of its puzzle, and Carl was one step closer to solving the mystery. But as he stepped out into the cool El Paso night, he couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to the story than met the eye. The woman in white had shown him a glimpse of the past, but there were still many secrets left to uncover. And as the theater's marquee lights flickered in the distance, Carl knew that his journey was far from over. The spirits of the Plaza Theater were calling out to him, and he was determined to answer. Chapter 4 
The man in black, the days following Carl's encounter with the woman in white, were filled with restless nights and an insatiable curiosity. The locket he had found in the theater felt like a key, a tangible link to the past. But as he delved deeper into the theater's history, another story began to emerge, one that was darker and more sinister. While going through old newspaper clippings, Carl stumbled upon a series of articles from the late 1930s about a bitter rivalry between two theater owners in El Paso. One was the beloved owner of the Plaza Theater, and the other was a man named Victor Caldwell, owner of a competing theater across town. The article spoke of fierce competition, underhanded tactics, and a rivalry that had the whole town talking. But what caught Carl's attention was a particular article dated a few months after Isabella's mysterious death. It reported the shocking news of Victor Caldwell's murder. He was found dead in his theater, and the circumstances surrounding his death were suspicious, to say the least. No one was ever charged, but rumors swirled that it was a revenge killing for Isabella's death. With this new information, Carl decided to visit Caldwell's old theater, which had long been abandoned and was now in a state of disrepair. As he approached the building, he felt an overwhelming sense of unease. The theater, with its boarded-up windows and crumbling facade, seemed to be hiding secrets of its own. Inside, the atmosphere was thick with dust and decay. The once grand auditorium was now a shadow of its former self, with torn curtains and broken seats. But as Carl explored, he began to feel a presence, as if he was being watched. Suddenly, out of the corner of his eye, he saw a figure lurking in the shadows, a man dressed in black, his face obscured by a wide-brimmed hat. The man's presence was menacing and Carl could feel the temperature in the room drop. As he watched, objects around the room began to move on their own. A chair rocked back and forth, a chandelier swayed, and a door slammed shut. Frozen in place, Carl tried to make sense of what he was seeing. But before he could react, he felt a cold hand on his shoulder. He spun around, but there was no one there. The man in black had vanished. Confused and frightened, Carl began to back away, but then he heard it, a whispered threat, chilling and clear, right in his ear. Leave this place and never return. Heart pounding, Carl raced out of the theater, the weight of the man in black's threat heavy on his mind. He knew he had stumbled upon another piece of the puzzle and he was determined to find out the truth. As he drove away, Carl couldn't shake the feeling that he was in danger. The man in black's presence was a stark contrast to the woman in white's, and he realized that the Plaza Theater's history was more complex than he had initially thought. Determined to get to the bottom of the mystery, Carl began to dig deeper into Victor Caldwell's life and death. He discovered that Caldwell was not only a rival theater owner but also had ties to the criminal underworld. Rumors of blackmail, betrayal, and forbidden love began to emerge, painting a picture of a man who had made many enemies. But as Carl pieced together the story, he couldn't help but wonder, was Victor Caldwell the man in black? And if so, what did he want? As night fell over El Paso, Carl knew that he was on the brink of uncovering a story that had been buried for decades. The spirits of the Plaza Theater were reaching out to him, and he was determined to listen. But as he delved deeper into the theater's past, he realized that some secrets were best left buried. The man in black's threat was a stark reminder that the past was not always as it seemed and that the line between the living and the dead was thinner than he had ever imagined. Chapter 5 
The child's play the days following Carl's encounter with the man in black were filled with a sense of unease. The whispered threat still echoed in his ears, and he couldn't shake the feeling that he was being watched. But his journalistic instincts pushed him forward, urging him to uncover the truth about the Plaza Theater's haunted past. One evening, as Carl was poring over old newspaper clippings in his apartment, he heard a sound that made him freeze, a soft, rhythmic bouncing, like that of a ball. He looked around, trying to locate the source of the sound, but his apartment was silent. Curious, Carl decided to return to the theater. The sound of the bouncing ball seemed to be calling out to him, drawing him back to the place where it all began. As he entered the theater's grand lobby, the atmosphere was thick with anticipation. The dim ambient light from the street lamps outside cast long, dancing shadows across the room. And then, faintly at first, he heard it again, the sound of a bouncing ball, echoing through the vastness of the auditorium. Carl followed the sound, his footsteps echoing in the silence. As he made his way towards the stage, he saw a sight that took his breath away, an apparition of a child, playing with a ball. The child was dressed in old-fashioned clothes, his face pale and his eyes filled with sadness. He seemed to be looking for something or someone, his gaze searching the room. Carl approached the child slowly, his heart racing. Hello? He whispered, hoping to make a connection. The child looked up, his eyes locking onto Carl's. For a moment, time seemed to stand still. The child's gaze was filled with longing, as if he was trying to communicate something to Carl. Suddenly, the child's face lit up with recognition. He pointed towards a seat in the front row, his gaze fixed on a spot under the cushion. Curious. Carl made his way to the seat and began to search. And there, tucked away under the cushion, he found an old toy, a wooden horse, worn and faded with age. As he held the toy, Carl felt a rush of emotions. Sadness, longing, and a deep sense of loss. He realized that the toy must have belonged to the child, a remnant of a life cut short. He looked up, hoping to share his discovery with the child, but the apparition had vanished. The theater was once again silent and empty, but the sound of the child's laughter echoed through the room, filling the space with a sense of joy and wonder. Carl clutched the toy to his chest, feeling a connection to the child and his story. He realized that the theater was not just a building but a vessel for the memories and emotions of those who had come before. As he made his way out of the theater, Carl felt a renewed sense of purpose. He was determined to uncover the truth about the child's life and death and bring his story to light. The spirits of the Plaza Theater had revealed another piece of their puzzle, and Carl was one step closer to solving the mystery. But as he stepped out into the cool El Paso night, he couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to the story than met the eye. The child's laughter was a haunting reminder of the mysteries that lay within the walls of the Plaza Theater Performing Arts Center. And as the theater's marquee lights flickered in the distance, Carl knew that his journey was far from over. The spirits of the Plaza Theater were calling out to him and he was determined to answer. Chapter 6 The Orbs and Lights The Plaza Theater Performing Arts Center, with its rich history and haunting tales, had become an obsession for Carl. Each visit unveiled a new layer of mystery, and he was determined to document every eerie occurrence. Armed with a high-resolution camera and a sense of purpose, Carl decided to conduct a nighttime investigation, hoping to capture evidence of the paranormal. As he set up his equipment in the main auditorium, the theater was bathed in an eerie silence. 
The only sound was the soft hum of his camera and the distant echo of his own heartbeat. With bated breath, he began to take photos, sweeping the camera across the vast space. To his astonishment, when he reviewed the images, he noticed several orbs, translucent spheres of light that seemed to float in midair. These orbs were often considered by paranormal enthusiasts to be manifestations of spirits or energy. But what caught his attention even more were the mysterious streaks of light that darted across some of the photos. They seemed to have a life of their own, moving with purpose and intent. As Carl continued to photograph, he felt a shift in the atmosphere. The air grew dense, and a strange energy pulsated through the theater. It was as if the very walls were alive, resonating with the memories and emotions of the past. Suddenly, one of the lights grew brighter and more pronounced. It seemed to be beckoning him, leading him towards the back of the theater. Intrigued, Carl decided to follow, his camera in hand. The light led him down a narrow corridor, past old dressing rooms and storage areas. With each step, the energy grew stronger, pulling him forward. And then, to his astonishment, he came upon a hidden door, concealed behind an old tapestry. With a sense of anticipation, Carl pushed the door open, revealing a small, dimly lit room. The walls were lined with shelves, and on them were old letters, diaries, and photographs, all covered in a thick layer of dust. As he began to sift through the items, Carl realized that he had stumbled upon a treasure trove of the theater's history. The letters spoke of love, betrayal, and ambition, painting a vivid picture of the lives of those who had once graced the theater's stage. The diaries contained personal accounts of strange occurrences, echoing the tales of hauntings that Carl had heard. But one diary, in particular, caught his attention. It belonged to a stagehand named Thomas, who had worked at the theater in the early 1900s. In it, Thomas wrote of his encounters with the spirits of the theater, the woman in white, the man in black, and the playful child. He spoke of the orbs and lights, describing them as manifestations of the theater's energy. And he hinted at a dark secret, a tragedy that had befallen the theater and left its mark on the building. As Carl read, he felt a deep connection to Thomas and his experiences. It was as if the diary was a bridge between the past and the present, linking their two worlds together. With a renewed sense of purpose, Carl gathered the letters and diaries, determined to piece together the theater's history. He knew that the answers he sought lay within those pages, and he was one step closer to uncovering the truth. But as he made his way out of the hidden room, he couldn't shake the feeling that he was not alone. The orbs and lights seemed to dance around him, their energy palpable. And as he stepped out into the cool El Paso night, he knew that his journey was far from over. The spirits of the Plaza Theater Performing Arts Center were reaching out to him, and he was determined to listen. The theater's walls held secrets, and Carl was on a mission to bring them to light. Chapter 7 the secrets unveiled the soft glow of a desk lamp illuminated the pages of the letters and diaries Carl had discovered in the hidden room of the Plaza Theater. As he delved into the writings, a story began to unfold, painting a vivid picture of love, betrayal, and tragedy. The letters were a correspondence between Isabella Martinez, the woman in white, and Victor Caldwell, the man in black. Their words spoke of a passionate and forbidden love affair, hidden from the prying eyes of society. But what Carl hadn't expected was the involvement of the theater's owner, a man named Robert Harrison. Robert, it seemed, was deeply in love with Isabella and had plans to marry her. 
but Isabella's heart belonged to Victor. The letters detailed their secret rendezvous, their dreams of a future together, and their fear of being discovered. As Carl continued to read, he came across a diary entry from Thomas, the stagehand. The entry spoke of a fateful night when the love triangle came to a head. Robert had discovered Isabella and Victor's affair and, in a fit of rage, confronted them at the theater. The confrontation escalated, and in the chaos, a tragic accident occurred. A stage prop fell, taking the life of a young child who had been playing nearby. The child, it turned out, was Isabella's younger brother, who often accompanied her to the theater. Devastated by the loss and consumed by guilt, Isabella distanced herself from both men. Victor, heartbroken and filled with remorse, disappeared from El Paso, while Robert, unable to cope with the tragedy, sold the theater and left town. Thomas's diary spoke of the aftermath of the accident. The theater, once a place of joy and entertainment, became a shadow of its former self. Performances were plagued by accidents, and patrons reported seeing apparitions and experiencing unexplained phenomena. Rumors began to circulate that the theater was cursed, haunted by the spirit of the young child and the tormented souls of the love triangle. As Carl pieced together the story, he felt a deep sense of sadness. The tragedy had left an indelible mark on the theater and the spirits were trapped, unable to find peace. Determined to help, Carl began to research ways to break the curse. He consulted with local historians, paranormal experts, and even reached out to a renowned psychic. Through his research, he learned of an ancient ritual that could cleanse the theater and release the trapped spirits. With a renewed sense of purpose, Carl gathered the necessary items for the ritual, a white candle, sage, and salt. He returned to the theater, determined to set things right. As he stood on the stage, he could feel the energy of the spirits around him. Taking a deep breath, he began the ritual, reciting the ancient words and performing the necessary actions. As he did, the atmosphere in the theater began to shift. The air grew lighter, and the oppressive energy began to dissipate. The orbs and lights danced around him, their energy palpable. And then, in a moment of pure magic, the spirits of Isabella, Victor, Robert, and the young child appeared before him. Their faces were filled with gratitude and relief. With a final nod, they began to fade away, their souls finally at peace. As dawn broke over El Paso, Carl stood in the now silent theater, the weight of the past lifted. The curse was broken, and the spirits were free. With a sense of accomplishment, Carl left the theater, knowing that he had played a part in healing its wounds. The Plaza Theater Performing Arts Center was once again a place of joy and entertainment, its haunted past a distant memory. But as he walked away, Carl couldn't help but feel a deep sense of gratitude. The spirits of the theater had reached out to him, and he had listened. And in doing so, he had uncovered a story that would stay with him forever. Chapter 8 the ritual, the weight of the Plaza Theater's tragic past, weighed heavily on Carl's mind. While he had uncovered the secrets of the love triangle and the tragic accident, he felt a deep responsibility to help the trapped spirits find peace. The theater's haunted reputation had grown over the years, and Carl believed that only by addressing the spirits directly could the theater truly be freed from its tormented past. Determined to find a solution, Carl sought out a local paranormal expert named Elena Ramirez. Elena was well known in El Paso for her expertise in communicating with the spirit world. 
she had a deep understanding of the rituals and practices that could bridge the gap between the living and the departed. When Carl approached Elena with the theater story, she listened intently, her eyes reflecting a mix of concern and determination. The spirits are trapped, she said softly. They have unfinished business, and until that is resolved, they will remain tethered to the theater. Together, they devised a plan to conduct a ritual that would allow them to communicate directly with the spirits. The theater's grand stage, with its rich history and strong energy, would serve as the perfect setting. The night of the ritual arrived, and the theater was bathed in an eerie silence. The only light came from a circle of candles that Elena had arranged on the stage. In the center of the circle stood a small table, upon which lay various ritualistic items, a crystal ball, a bundle of sage, and a silver chalice filled with salt water. Elena began by cleansing the space, wafting the sage smoke around the stage and reciting an ancient incantation. Carl watched in awe, feeling the energy in the room shift and intensify. Once the space was prepared, Elena motioned for Carl to join her inside the circle. We must be united in our intent, she whispered. Focus your thoughts on the spirits and invite them to join us. As they both closed their eyes and began to concentrate, the atmosphere grew thick with anticipation. The candles flickered, casting dancing shadows on the walls. And then, slowly, the spirits began to appear. First came the woman in white, her ethereal beauty radiating a soft glow. Next to her stood the man in black, his face obscured by the shadow of his hat. And beside them, the playful spirit of the child, his innocent eyes filled with curiosity. Elena began to communicate with the spirits, her voice soft and soothing. We are here to help, she said. Tell us what you need to find peace. The woman in white stepped forward, her voice echoing through the theater. I am Isabella, she began. My love for Victor was pure and true, but it was overshadowed by tragedy. I need to know that he forgives me for the pain our love caused. The man in black, Victor, responded, his voice filled with emotion. Isabella, my love for you has never waned. I forgive you, and I hope you can forgive me too. The child, with a sense of urgency, spoke next. I am Miguel, he said. I was taken too soon and I never got to say goodbye to my sister, Isabella. I need her to know that I love her and that I am at peace. Isabella, tears streaming down her face, reached out to embrace her brother. Miguel, she whispered, I have missed you every day. I love you. As the spirits communicated, Carl felt a profound sense of healing and closure. The pain and regret that had plagued the theater for decades were finally being addressed. Elena, sensing that the spirit's unfinished business was nearing its resolution, began to recite a final incantation. The spirits, their messages delivered, began to fade away, leaving behind a sense of peace and tranquility. The ritual was complete. As Carl and Elena extinguished the candles and packed up the ritualistic items, they both felt a deep sense of accomplishment. The spirits of the Plaza Theater had been heard, and their stories had been honored. The theater, once a place of tragedy and heartbreak, was now a beacon of hope and healing. And as Carl walked away, he knew that he had played a part in restoring the theater's legacy ensuring that its stories would be remembered for generations to come. Chapter 9 The Resolution The Plaza Theater Performing Arts Center, once a beacon of entertainment and joy, had been overshadowed by tales of hauntings and tragedy. But Carl, 
with his unwavering determination and the guidance of Elena, had managed to communicate with the spirits that roamed its halls. Now, it was time to help them find the peace they so desperately sought. The theater, bathed in the soft glow of dawn, seemed different to Carl. The oppressive weight of its haunted past had lifted slightly, replaced by a palpable sense of hope. With Elena by his side, Carl began the final steps of the resolution. First, they addressed Isabella, the woman in white. Her love story with Victor, fraught with passion and tragedy, had left her spirit restless. Elena, with her deep knowledge of the spirit world, had procured a locket, identical to the one Isabella had once owned. Inside it was a picture of Victor. Handing it to the apparition of Isabella, Elena whispered, Reunite with your lost love. Let this be a symbol of your eternal bond. Isabella, clutching the locket to her heart, began to radiate a soft, ethereal light. As she did, the figure of Victor, the man in black, appeared beside her. Their hands reached out, fingers entwining, and as they touched, a warmth spread throughout the theater. Their reunion was a testament to the enduring power of love, transcending the boundaries of life and death. Next, they turned their attention to Victor. His affair with Isabella and the subsequent tragedy had left him burdened with guilt. Elena, ever the empath, spoke gently to him. Seek forgiveness, not from others, but from yourself. The past cannot be changed, but you can find peace in acceptance. Victor, tears streaming down his face, nodded. I have carried this guilt for too long, he whispered. It's time to let go. As he spoke, the shadows that had always clung to him began to dissipate, replaced by a serene light. Finally, it was young Miguel's turn. The child, who had tragically lost his life all those years ago, had one simple wish, to find his beloved toy. Carl, remembering the wooden horse he had discovered earlier, presented it to Miguel. The child's face lit up with pure joy as he clutched the toy, and his laughter, innocent and carefree, echoed through the theater. With the spirit's wishes fulfilled, Elena began the final ritual to lift the curse from the theater. Chanting an ancient incantation, she called upon the spirits to release their hold on the theater. As she did, a brilliant light enveloped the stage growing in intensity until it filled every corner of the auditorium. When the light finally faded, the theater was transformed. The air was light, the oppressive energy gone. The curse that had plagued the Plaza Theater for decades had been lifted. Carl, overwhelmed with emotion, turned to Elena. We did it, he whispered, tears of joy in his eyes. Elena nodded, a smile on her face. The spirits are at peace, and the theater is free. You have done a great service, Carl. As they left the theater, the first rays of the morning sun painted the sky in hues of gold and pink. The Plaza Theater Performing Arts Center, with its grand facade and rich history, stood tall and proud, ready to welcome a new chapter. And Carl, with a heart full of gratitude and a story to tell, walked away, knowing that he had played a part in restoring the theater's legacy and bringing peace to the spirits that had once roamed its halls. Chapter 10 The Farewell The Plaza Theater Performing Arts Center, with its ornate architecture and grandeur, had always been a symbol of El Paso's cultural heritage. But for Carl, it had become so much more. It was a place of mystery, discovery, and ultimately, redemption. A few days after the ritual, Carl received an invitation to attend a private event at the theater. Curious, he made his way there, 
the memories of his recent experiences still fresh in his mind. As he entered the grand auditorium, he was greeted by a sight that took his breath away. The spirits of Isabella, Victor, and young Miguel stood on the stage, their ethereal forms radiating a soft glow. They were not alone. The theater was filled with other spirits, all of whom Carl recognized from the tales and histories he had uncovered. Isabella stepped forward, her voice echoing through the vast space. Carl, she began, we have gathered here to thank you. Your determination, compassion, and belief have set us free. You have given us the peace we so desperately sought. Victor nodded in agreement, his eyes filled with gratitude. You have done what many thought was impossible. You listened to our stories, understood our pain, and helped us find closure. Young Miguel, clutching his wooden horse, added, Thank you for reuniting me with my toy and helping me find joy once again. The other spirits murmured their agreement, their voices filling the theater with a chorus of gratitude. Carl, overwhelmed with emotion, took a moment to compose himself. I am honored to have been a part of your journey, he replied. The Plaza Theater's legacy is intertwined with your stories, and I am grateful to have been able to help. As the spirits began to fade away, the theater was filled with a sense of serenity and calm. The oppressive weight of its haunted past had been lifted, replaced by a feeling of hope and renewal. With the spirits at peace, the theater was once again free from paranormal activity. The tales of hauntings and apparitions became a thing of the past, replaced by stories of hope, redemption, and the enduring power of love. Inspired by his experiences, Carl decided to write an article detailing his journey. Titled, The Spirits of the Plaza Theater, A Journey from Haunting to Healing, the article was published in a prominent local newspaper and quickly gained widespread attention. Readers were captivated by Carl's account, and the theater became a symbol of hope and redemption for the people of El Paso. As the days turned into weeks, the Plaza Theater saw a resurgence in popularity. Patrons flocked to the theater, not in search of ghosts, but to experience the magic of live performances and to be a part of the theater's rich legacy. For Carl, the theater would always hold a special place in his heart. It was where he had uncovered a mystery, connected with the spirits of the past, and played a part in healing old wounds. As he stood outside the theater one last time, taking in its grand facade and ornate details, he felt a deep sense of gratitude. The spirits had reached out to him, and he had listened. Their stories would stay with him forever, a testament to the power of belief, compassion, and understanding. With a final nod to the theater, Carl walked away, the memories of his journey etched in his heart. The Plaza Theater Performing Arts Center, with its tales of love, tragedy, and redemption, would continue to stand tall, a beacon of hope and inspiration for generations to come. Chapter 11 The Legacy The Plaza Theater Performing Arts Center, with its majestic facade and rich history, had always been a jewel in the heart of El Paso. But after Carl's experiences and the subsequent cleansing of its haunted past, the theater began to shine even brighter. Word quickly spread about the theater's transformation. Carl's article, The Spirits of the Plaza Theater, A Journey from Haunting to Healing, had become a sensation. It was shared widely, discussed fervently, and even featured in national publications. Readers were captivated by the tale of love, tragedy, and redemption that had unfolded within the theater's walls. The article's impact was profound. People from all over the country, and even from overseas, began to flock to the Plaza Theater. 
They came not in search of ghosts or paranormal activity, but to experience the theater's beauty, to immerse themselves in its history, and to be a part of its renewed legacy. The theater's management, recognizing the surge in interest, began to offer guided tours. These tours delved deep into the theater's past, recounting its storied history, the tales of Isabella, Victor, and young Miguel, and Carl's role in helping the spirits find peace. The tours became incredibly popular, often selling out weeks in advance. But it wasn't just the tours that drew people in. The theater's programming saw a resurgence, with performances ranging from classic plays to contemporary productions, concerts, and even film screenings. The theater was alive with activity, its auditorium filled with the laughter, applause, and awe of its patrons. As the months went by, the Plaza Theater became more than just a place of entertainment. It became a symbol of hope, love, and redemption. The spirits of Isabella, Victor, and Miguel, once trapped in a cycle of pain and regret, were now remembered fondly as a part of the theater's legacy. Their stories, as recounted by Carl, served as a reminder of the power of love, the importance of forgiveness, and the possibility of redemption. The theater also became a hub for community events. Local schools began to hold their performances there, and charitable events were often hosted on its grand stage. The theater's management even started a scholarship fund in honor of Isabella, Victor, and Miguel, providing financial assistance to aspiring artists and performers from the community. Carl, who had once entered the theater as a curious journalist, had now become a part of its legacy. He often attended performances, always sitting in the same seat, and would occasionally give talks about his experiences. He became a beloved figure in the community, known for his compassion, determination, and unwavering belief in the power of love and understanding. As the years went by, the Plaza Theater Performing Arts Center stood tall and proud, its legacy ever evolving. The spirits of Isabella, Victor, and Miguel, once a source of fear and mystery, were now celebrated as a testament to the theater's rich history and the enduring power of love. And as the curtain fell on each performance, the theater's message was clear. Love, forgiveness, and redemption are possible, even in the face of tragedy. The Plaza Theater, with its grandeur and history, was a living testament to that truth, its legacy shining bright for all to see. Chapter 12 the return the years had flown by, and much had changed in El Paso. New buildings had sprung up, old ones had been renovated, and the city had grown and evolved. But the Plaza Theater Performing Arts Center remained a constant, its grand facade a testament to its enduring legacy. Carl, now a seasoned journalist with accolades and recognition, had traveled the world, covering stories that spanned continents. Yet, there was one place, one story, that always lingered in his heart, the Plaza Theater. The memories of his time there, the spirits he had encountered, and the legacy he had helped shape were etched in his soul. One crisp autumn evening, Carl found himself back in El Paso. The city's familiar sights and sounds enveloped him in a warm embrace, but it was the theater that beckoned him. Drawn to it, almost as if by an invisible force, Carl made his way to the grand building. As he stood outside, taking in its majestic beauty, a flood of memories washed over him. He remembered the first time he had set foot inside, the whispers of its haunted past the spirits he had encountered, and the journey he had embarked on to help them find peace. With a sense of nostalgia and longing, Carl entered the theater. The grand auditorium, with its plush seats and ornate details, 
looked just as he remembered. The soft glow of the chandeliers cast a warm light, and the air was filled with a sense of serenity. Lost in his thoughts, Carl barely noticed the figure standing in the distance. But as he looked closer, recognition dawned. It was Charles Russell, the mysterious old man who had first warned him about the theater's haunted past. Charles, looking just as Carl remembered him, approached with a smile. Carl, he began, his voice filled with warmth, it's been a long time. Carl, taken aback, replied, Charles, I wasn't expecting to see you here. It's been years. Charles nodded, indeed, it has. But I've always been here, watching over the theater, ensuring its legacy remains intact. The two men shared a moment of reflection, thinking back to the events that had transpired all those years ago. I never got the chance to thank you, Charles said, his eyes filled with gratitude. You saved this theater, Carl. You helped the spirits find peace and ensured that their stories were remembered. Carl, humbled by Charles's words, replied, I merely played a part. It was the spirits, their stories, and the theater's rich history that guided me. Charles smiled. Nevertheless, you made a difference. The theater thrives because of you, and its legacy will continue for generations to come. The two men continued to talk, reminiscing about the past and sharing stories of their respective journeys. As the evening wore on, Charles, with a twinkle in his eye, said, It's time for me to go. But remember, Carl, the theater will always be here, and its legacy will live on, thanks to you. With a final nod, Charles faded away leaving Carl alone in the grand auditorium. As he looked around, taking in the theater's beauty, he felt a deep sense of gratitude and contentment. The Plaza Theater Performing Arts Center, with its tales of love, tragedy, and redemption, would always hold a special place in Carl's heart. And as he left the theater, he knew that he would always be a part of its legacy a testament to the power of belief, compassion, and understanding. Chapter 13 The New Beginning The Plaza Theater Performing Arts Center, once shrouded in tales of hauntings and tragedy, had undergone a transformation. With its spirits at peace and its legacy secured, the theater was ready to embark on a new chapter. The management, recognizing the renewed interest in the theater, introduced a series of new shows and performances. From classical plays to contemporary dance productions, from musical extravaganzas to avant-garde experimental performances, the theater's programming was diverse and captivating. The city's cultural scene was abuzz with excitement, and the Plaza Theater was at its epicenter. Carl, having witnessed the theater's transformation firsthand, felt a deep connection to its legacy. The memories of his time there, the spirits he had encountered, and the stories he had uncovered were a constant source of inspiration. And so, he decided to pen a book detailing his experiences. Titled, Echoes of the Plaza, A Journey from Shadows to Light, the book aimed to capture the essence of the theater's rich history, its haunted past, and its journey towards redemption. But Carl knew that his story was just one piece of the puzzle. To paint a complete picture, he needed to delve deeper, to uncover the myriad tales that were intertwined with the theater's legacy. With this in mind, Carl began interviewing people who had had paranormal experiences in the theater. The stories he uncovered were diverse, fascinating, and at times, chilling. There were tales of apparitions, of cold spots and unexplained noises, of shadows that moved on their own, and of feelings of being watched. But amidst the eerie accounts, 
There was a common thread, a sense of awe, respect, and reverence for the theater and its spirits. As Carl delved deeper into these stories, he realized that the Plaza Theater was more than just a building. It was a living entity, with a soul and a heartbeat. It had witnessed love and loss, joy and sorrow, hope and despair. And through it all, it had stood tall, a beacon of hope and inspiration for the people of El Paso. The book, when published, became an instant bestseller. Readers were captivated by Carl's account, by the tales of the spirits, and by the theater's journey from darkness to light. Book signings, interviews, and talks followed, and Carl found himself in the limelight, a spokesperson for the theater's legacy. But for Carl, the accolades and recognition were secondary. What mattered most was the impact the book had on its readers. Many reached out to him, sharing their own experiences, their connections to the theater, and the inspiration they drew from its legacy. The Plaza Theater, with its tales of love, tragedy, and redemption, had touched the hearts of many, and its story continued to inspire. As the years went by, the theater's legacy grew stronger. It became a symbol of hope, resilience, and the enduring power of love. And Carl, with his book and his unwavering belief in the theater's magic, played a pivotal role in shaping its new beginning. The Plaza Theater Performing Arts Center, with its grand facade and rich history, stood tall and proud, a testament to the power of love, forgiveness, and redemption. And as the curtain rose on each new performance, the theater's message was clear. Every soul, every story, every moment, is worth cherishing. Chapter 14 The Celebration The Plaza Theater Performing Arts Center, with its ornate architecture and storied past, was on the cusp of a significant milestone. As the theater approached its 100th anniversary, the city of El Paso buzzed with excitement. Plans were afoot for a grand celebration, befitting the theater's legacy and its place in the heart of the community. Invitations were sent out, and the guest list read like a who's who of El Paso's cultural and social elite. But there was one name that stood out, one individual whose connection to the theater was deep and profound, Carl. As the day of the celebration neared, Carl found himself reflecting on his journey with the theater. From his first encounter with its haunted past to his role in helping the spirits find peace, the theater had become an integral part of his life. And now, as it stood on the brink of its centenary, Carl felt a mix of pride, nostalgia, and anticipation. The evening of the celebration arrived, and the theater was decked out in all its glory. Golden banners adorned its facade, and the red carpet was rolled out, welcoming guests to what promised to be a night to remember. As Carl entered the grand auditorium, he was greeted with a sight that warmed his heart. Familiar faces from his past, friends he had made during his time at the theater, and new acquaintances all mingled, the air filled with laughter, joy, and excitement. Elena, the local paranormal expert who had been instrumental in the theater's transformation, approached Carl with a smile. It's been a while, she said, embracing him. This place, it's changed, hasn't it? Carl nodded. It has, and for the better. But the memories, the stories, they remain. The evening progressed, with performances that paid tribute to the theater's rich history. From classical renditions to contemporary acts, the stage came alive, reflecting the theater's journey through the decades. As the clock struck midnight, marking the theater's official 100th anniversary, the atmosphere turned electric. The lights dimmed, and a hush fell over the audience. And then, in a moment that took everyone's breath away, 
the spirits of Isabella, Victor, and young Miguel appeared on stage. Their ethereal forms, bathed in a soft glow, danced gracefully, their movements reflecting the joy, sorrow, love, and tragedy that had played out within the theater's walls. It was a sight to behold, a testament to the theater's legacy and the spirit's eternal connection to it. The audience, spellbound, watched in awe. And as the spirits took their final bow, disappearing into the ether, the auditorium erupted in applause. The rest of the night was a blur of joy, laughter, and memories. Carl, surrounded by friends old and new, celebrated the theater's milestone, its legacy, and the journey they had all been a part of. As dawn broke, signaling the end of the festivities, Carl stood outside the theater, taking in its grandeur. The Plaza Theater Performing Arts Center, with its tales of love, tragedy, and redemption, had stood the test of time, its legacy shining bright for all to see. And as Carl walked away, he knew that the theater's story was far from over. It would continue to inspire, to captivate, and to touch the hearts of many, its legacy living on for generations to come. Chapter 15 The Final Curtain The Plaza Theater Performing Arts Center, with its grand facade and rich tapestry of stories, had seen countless performances, witnessed myriad emotions, and played host to generations of patrons. But for Carl, it was more than just a theater. It was a place where he had embarked on a journey of discovery, where he had connected with spirits from the past, and where he had played a role in shaping its legacy. As Carl sat in the theater's plush seats, the soft glow of the chandeliers casting a warm light, he found himself reflecting on his journey. The memories came flooding back, the whispers of the theater's haunted past, the spirits he had encountered, the tales of love, tragedy, and redemption, and the legacy he had helped shape. He remembered Isabella, with her grace and elegance, Victor, with his passion and intensity, and young Miguel, with his innocence and joy. These spirits, once trapped in a cycle of pain and regret, had found peace, thanks to Carl's determination, compassion, and belief. But as Carl delved deeper into his memories, he realized something profound. The spirits were not just ghosts, remnants of the past. They were a part of the theater's soul, its essence. They were a testament to the theater's rich history, its tales of love and loss, hope and despair. Carl felt a deep connection to the theater and its history. It was as if the theater's walls, with their ornate details and intricate carvings, whispered tales from the past, each story adding to its rich tapestry. And Carl, with his experiences and his role in the theater's transformation, was now a part of that tapestry. As the evening wore on, Carl made his way to the stage. The grand auditorium, with its plush seats and majestic chandeliers, looked just as he remembered. But there was a difference. The oppressive weight of its haunted past had been lifted, replaced by a sense of serenity, hope, and renewal. Carl stood at center stage, taking in the theater's beauty. And as he did, he felt a sense of gratitude, contentment, and peace. The Plaza Theater, with its tales of love, tragedy, and redemption, had touched his soul, and its legacy would stay with him forever. With a deep breath, Carl addressed the empty auditorium. Thank you, he began, his voice echoing through the vast space. Thank you for the memories, the stories, and the legacy. The Plaza Theater will always hold a special place in my heart. And with that, as the final curtain fell, Carl took a bow and exited the stage. The theater, with its grandeur and history, stood tall, proud, and eternal. 
its legacy, shaped by tales of love, tragedy, and redemption, would continue to inspire, captivate, and touch the hearts of many. The Plaza Theater Performing Arts Center, with its stories echoing through time, was a testament to the power of love, the importance of forgiveness, and the possibility of redemption. And as the curtain fell on this chapter of its history, its legacy shone bright, a beacon of hope and inspiration for generations to come. We hope you have enjoyed our Paranormal Plaza Theater in El Paso, Scary Story. Please visit us at Paranormal Untold Stories. Come to listen to more of our Scary Stories collection. Paranormal Untold Stories encourages you to contact us if you have your own untold story that you would like our professionals team to put online as a scary story. Thank you. Please follow our YouTube channel, Paranormal Untold Stories, and encourage others to do the same. Paranormal Untold Stories